it is drummed into us so much these days that, that video is king. Our hunger for video content is insatiable. Uh, something like apparently 3.7 million new videos are uploaded to YouTube every day. At an average of four and a half minutes each, that is 271,000 hours of video content. So in the middle of all that, it's easy to forget the power of live theatre, the, the almost visceral response you can have to watching a story being acted out by live players before your very eyes. Well, a Toowoomba-based theatre company called uh, Mashed Theatre harnesses that power and channels it into uh, original plays that both entertain and educate students. And then for those students who get a taste for it to be on the stage themselves, uh, workshops to teach the skills of acting for stage and screen. And I know what you're thinking, how is something this extraordinary happening in my town? And I never even knew about it. Well, that was my reaction. Uh, let me fix that for you. Uh, Matt Caffo is the founder of MASH Theatre, and he joins me in the studio. Matt, good morning. Good morning, David. How are you doing? Very, very well. Just a, 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 a quick look at your uh, MASH Theatre website makes me think you must have the, the greatest job in the world, I think. <laughs> is this what you envisaged? doing with your uh, your career when you you left uh, USQ I think 2009 it was what you yeah. had in mind yeah no I, I well uh, no it's not but but like I like that it's this progression that has happened it's this evolution but uh, I mean I imagine like I think any actor imagines they're going to become a you know movie star in, yeah. in Hollywood and <laughs> the next Tom Cruise <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, you know but uh, I worked in a couple of with, with a couple of educational theatre companies back when I kind of uh, graduated as well as working overseas in Germany um, in some theatre companies over there as well uh, and I kind of you know theatre is kind of my my, my joy when it comes to, to yeah. acting you know it's yep. yeah, where I really thrive absolutely yeah. and really I suppose um, and this is in no way downplaying what you're, you're doing because we're going to talk about that in a moment. But, you know, those who think the only path for an actor is to, to be, if it's theatre, it's on the stage down at, you know, QTC, down at the, the Lyric Theatre mm. or whatever, or, or it's uh, at the Empire or, or uh, whatever. It's really, as long as there's an audience and you are performing, you're doing what you want to do, aren't you, really? Yeah, 100%. I mean, and, and you know what, like, in many ways, uh, the kind of touring theatre route is is kind of the renaissance of, of theatre anyway. You know, it's where it all originated from, your yeah. touring troops back in 1600s, 1500s yeah. that would go around and perform, and that's the only place that they would perform. So in many ways, we're kind of getting in touch with the roots of the Absolutely. theatrical plane. Yeah. yeah, and it's so exciting because you've only just got to have a little bit of a... Um, uh, a skim over the MASH Theatre website to realise this is a, like a multifaceted company. But one of those facets um, is taking shows to schools based on what's in the curriculum, uh, mm. including Shakespeare, but presenting those shows in a contemporary way. Uh, do you wish someone had, had done that for you when you were in high school? Was Shakespeare sort of uh, uh, you know something that you loved or was it presented in a way that didn't really get under your skin? Yeah, I, I loved Shakespeare, but um, it, I, we didn't get any opportunities like what no. we provide in schools. Um, yep. The only thing that I, the closest thing I got to it was um, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet, you know, oh, yeah. 1995 film, and and that was awesome. When I saw that, I was like, oh, I want to be an actor, a, and then b, this is awesome. Like, yeah. I love Shakespeare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so so it uh, it sort of ticked both of those boxes. Yeah, because yeah. again, same story, but contemporary telling in a way that's sort of relevant for you at that time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and it was just you know, colourful and, and it was adapted really well to a kind of a semi-modern audience, you know, like it still had its kind of hinges in, in like that, you know, Zeffirelli 60s version of things, but, yep. you know, calling a sword, a gun a sword or whatever it was that he was doing, like cute little intertextual things that they did throughout it. So yeah, things yeah. that we couldn't really relate to as, as modern audiences anyway, but like it still had this like flair about it that just really made me kind of fall in love with it yeah. absolutely yeah. so is that what you guys try to do with uh, you and your team with uh, Shakespeare and other traditional plays I mean, but yeah, well it's what you try to do but is it is it a fine line that you tread that you know because your uh, schools invite you in because the students are studying this play mm. as part of the curriculum they want to uh, students to see a modern take on it but they still want it to be 100 percent authentic to the original play because that's mm. what they're going to get marked on yeah. is, is that hard to create a, a modern take on it but still honor the original yeah it is um um 
you know, because we also like we want it to be entertaining for the for the young people watching the shows, um, and we never want it to feel like it's. Um, you know they're, they're they're being preached to or educated to you know because that when you do that to teenagers they'll they'll switch off yep so you know we try and keep our shows as engaging and as entertaining as possible but at the same time we're towing the line of you know really adhering to a curriculum so that that takes a little while in the rehearsal process or the creation process of creating the play to to uh find the line that's like oh this is a good balance for it yep. um, but once we get that you know or once you do it a couple times it gets a lot easier to do for the rest of them you know you kind of know what lines to hit what moments to hit for teachers yep. and then what's going to work for teenagers as well yep. yeah yeah so you you appease both sides exactly yeah <laughs> that's perfect that's yeah. how you know you've, you've you've done a good job <laughs> the uh, you and your team at mashed also write plays based on uh, some of the challenges that that students, modern teenagers, uh, face these mm -hmm. days. You're about to tour a play called Toxic. Yeah. What's Toxic about? Toxic is uh, is about you know, toxic behaviours within young people, um, things that they may or may not be aware of. You know, just uh, indelible qualities that we have as human beings that we, when we're not conscious of or not cognitive of, we 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 tend to come across as toxic. And it's only only takes someone in your life to go, oh, you're actually not a really nice person because you do this sort of thing for you to unlearn those things um, or to be aware of them. But, um, you know, things like media consumption blindly, you know, like following things like on TikTok and all that kind of stuff and then regurgitating information that you haven't really researched yourself uh, and then like putting that onto other people. Uh, also like, you know, uh, uh, vaping is a, is a big part of this show. Uh, and that was kind of our entry point into the creating of the show because teachers, you know, were like, do you have any shows about vaping? And we were like, no, but we can. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I bet, give, me, give me two weeks. <laughs> and, uh, it's and, yours. Yeah. and so we advertised that we had a show about vaping and then we had to make one. So we were like, okay, well, how do we do this? And so, yeah. And it, and it's really a show about, um, you know, um, what does it what does it cost to fit in as a teenager? Um, and so that leads to vaping or substance abuse uh, in young people, but also doing behaviors that you may or may not necessarily agree with that align with you as a person um, that yep. you then learn from. So, yep. yeah. Yep. It's interesting though, um, you take research very seriously. And I guess mm. this is the only way to create something that's authentic that the teenagers are not going to be able to see through a, a mile off. Yeah. You, you actually go into schools and have a chat to, to students or, yeah. or, or something and sort of get these stories and their views on these things firsthand. Is that challenging to do, to you know, get them to open up and, and realise that the end product is going to be good? Yeah, it is. And it's like, uh, you know, we, we kind of preface the whole focus group thing to, to be like, it's, it's voluntary and we will be asking some personal questions. Um, so they kind of know beforehand going into it that they're going to be sharing something from their life with us. Um, and we also have like the caveat on top of that of like, you know, you sharing your story won't mean that your story is going to be exposed to people. No. We're just uh, gathering research and any names or events are going to be altered and changed so that way we can protect your anonymity. anonymity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like... Uh, it, it, you know, it takes the one person to get the ball rolling in those focus groups and then, you know, everyone, it's like an avalanche. People start, yeah. you know, yeah, opening right. up more and more and it's like, because they realize it's a safe space and they're like, oh, okay, we can talk, we can talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You just got to get that one person to step forward firstly and, uh, yeah. and yeah, it's, it, we're a bit, a bit like sheep as teenagers as well. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. as adults too, I guess. You just need that one person to jump in the pool. That's right. <laughs> it's, I, it's brilliant what you guys are, are doing. I can't probably sort of cover it all, but I wanted to ask you, and because where a lot of people, if they weren't aware of MASH Theatre through uh, the perhaps a, a performance coming to their, their uh, sons or daughters or grandchild's um, school, mm. uh, you they would have seen the sign up at the Toowoomba Lighthouse. You're now very much a, a presence there in that creative hub. Do you, do you feel like you've sort of found your spiritual home? Because uh, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. Yeah, honestly, it's like been amazing being there um we we kind of signed up there six months ago um just as like a small tenant office that we would hire that space for a little bit and yep. uh being around creatives and, uh, and uh, other businesses that are creative and wor working in youth engagement as well um has been something that's kind of like let us flourish a bit and feel comfortable like where we were previously was great but everyone had their own kind of it was 
very much business. Right. Um, and so we'd feel a little uncomfortable rehearsing a show, for example, and like, you know, we'd be screaming Shakespearean lines, uh, <laughs> you know, people be kind of going, oh my God, what's happening down there? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the accountant next door would be saying, could you keep it down, please? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so so now, um, you know, it's, it's very much... Uh, accepted what we do and it's artistic and so that it, it, we feel at home and of course we've got our big sign on the oh yeah on the front yes. window there very bold <laughs> yeah, yeah you can't miss it it's it's terrific